okay dear students today we'll be discussing about the excretive products and their elimination so an important uh, aspect of uh, human physiology that is removal of nitrogenous waste through the kidneys so kidneys are almost similar to the filters in your aquarium so they filter the nitrogenous waste and help in removing the urea which is thrown out during the urination process so there is a formation of urine so through which the nitrogenous waste are thrown out okay what is excretion so excretion is the elimination of metabolic waste materials like ammonia urea uric acid from the body so excretion is the elimination of metabolic waste materials like ammonia urea or uric acid from the body so the types of excretion are aminotelism which is seen in most of the aquatic animals like fishes ureotelism which is seen in case of amphibians and human beings the uricotelism where they are going to uh, excrete the uh, waste in the form of uric acid so these are the three types of animals uh, based on their excretory products so the types of excretion are aminotelism ureotelism and uricotelism in cases of ammonotelism it is a process of excretion of ammonia so ammonotelic animals generally they are aquatic invertebrates aquatic insects bony fishes aquatic amphibians they are all ammonotelic animals okay so ammonia is highly toxic so the ammonia is highly toxic so excretion needs excess of water so the ammonia is highly toxic and their excretion needs excess of water so ammonia is readily soluble in water uh, and it is excreted by diffusion through body surface or gill surfaces in fishes as ammonium ions so kidneys do not play any significant role in its removal so in case of ammonotelic animals which are mostly aquatic animals the process of excretion uh, is or the process of excretion of ammonia we call it as ammonotelism ammonotelic animals they are usually aquatic invertebrates aquatic insects bony fishes aquatic amphibians they are all the ammonotelic animals so ammonia is highly toxic so they have to be immediately eliminated so uh, Uh, which is done through the excretion uh, by water so ammonia is readily soluble in water and is excreted by diffusion through the body surfaces or gill surfaces in case of fishes so through the gill surfaces also this ammonia is excreted as ammonium ions so kidneys also play a significant role in its do not play the kidneys in case of these animals they do not play any significant role in the removal of ammonia so the animals which are going to eliminate the nitrogenous waste in the form of ammonia we call them as ammonotelic animals the phenomenon is called as ammonotelism so the next one is ureotelism so the process of excretion of urea so uh, the process of excretion of nitrogenous waste in the form of urea so we call it as uh, ureotelism this phenomenon is called as ureotelism and the animals which do that we call them as ureotelic animals example is man is a very good example of ureotelism so the cartilaginous fishes the terrestrial and semi aquatic amphibians the terrestrial amphibians and semi aquatic amphibians like frogs toads etc aquatic and semi aquatic reptiles so few of the reptiles are also there like aquatic and semi aquatic reptiles like alligators turtles mammals okay so they are all examples for uh, the animals which secrete the nitrogenous waste in the form of um, ammonia so the aquatic and semi aquatic uh, the terrestrial and semi aquatic amphibians like frogs toads aquatic and semi aquatic reptiles like alligators turtles mammals they all excrete the nitrogenous waste in the form of urea in liver ammonia is converted into less toxic urea uh, 
by ornithine cycle. So it needs only moderate quantity of water for excretion, not like ammonia where they require huge amount of water for excretion. So in liver, ammonia is converted into less toxic urea. So the animals need only moderate amount of water for excretion. Since they are, most of them are terrestrial or semi-aquatic animals, they have to conserve water and uricotilism, the ureotilism facilitates that. Some amount of urea may be retained in the kidney matrix of some animals to maintain, to maintain a desired osmolarity. So some amount of urea may be retained in the kidney matrix of a few of the animals so that they can maintain a desired or smallerity. So in liver, the toxic ammonia is converted into less toxic urea by ornithine cycle. So to remove urea, they require only moderate quantity of water for excretion. Then we have the uricotelic animals. So the process of excretion of uric acid uh, in our, we call that phenomenon as uricotilism. If the animals are going to excrete nitrogenous waste in the form of uric acid, we call such animals as uricotilic animals and the phenomenon is called as uricotilism. So this uric acid is insoluble in water. So water is not required for excretion. So the uric acid is insoluble in water and they do not require water for excretion. So the urico animals are, a few of these urico animals are insects, some land crustaceans like snails, insects, snails, some land crustaceans, uh, land snails, okay, terrestrial reptiles and birds. So the terrestrial reptiles and birds, they exhibit the uh, urico -telism. So ureotilism and uricotilism are required for conservation of water by these animals. So the insects, the land snails, terrestrial, some land crustaceans, land snails, terrestrial reptiles and birds, they're all uricotilic, wherein they are going to excrete the nitrogenous waste in the form of uric acid. Uric acid is insoluble in water, so very little amount is, so water is not required for excretion. So the uricotilic animals are examples for uricotilic animals are insects, uh, land crustaceans, land snails, uh, terrestrial reptiles, and birds. So they all excrete nitrogenous waste in the form of uric acid. So ureotilism and uricotilism are needed for conservation of water. Some of these it is required for your NEAT and CET and even for one mark. So you have to remember that. So the excretory organs in different phylums and classes. So the protonephridae or flame cells, they are noticed in case of flatworms, rotifers, some annelids. Annelids, you know that segmented worms and cephalochordata. So protonephridae or flame cells. The examples where they are seen in case of phylum platyhelminthes, phylum annelida, rotifers, some members of annelida, not all of them, and cephalochordata, few members of cephalochordata. They have the excretory organ in the form of protonephridia or flame cells. So the excretory, different types of excretory organs in animals are protonephridia or flame cells, nephridia, malphigian tubules, antennal glands or green glands, kidneys. So these are all the excretory organs. So nephridia, the excretory organ in case of phylum annelida is nephridia. Okay, the earthworm, uh, the leech, they all have the excretory organ as nephridia. So insects have the excretory organ in the form of malphigian tubules. Okay, so the crustaceans or prawns, they have this antennal glands, or we also call it as green glands. So they have the excretory organs in the form of antennal glands or green glands. So the higher animals, mammals, they are having this excretory organ as kidneys. So they are having the higher animals, they are having the excretory organs in the form of 
kidneys. So these are the things that we have to remember about the various excretory organs in animals. So the protonephridia or flame cells, nephridia, so protonephridia or flame cells, it is noticed in phylum platyhelminthes, a few members of phylum annelida, a few rotifers and a few members of cephalocardata. They have this protonephridia or flame cells. The excretory organ nephridia, you can notice it in case of phylum annelida. Then there is malphagian tubules, which is noticed in uh, insect class insecta. The antennal glands are coxal glands or antennal glands or green glands. They are seen in case of crustaceans like prawns. Okay. The kidneys are noticed in higher animals, including human beings. Most of the mammals, they have kidneys as a uh, excrete the organ. Now we'll study about the human excretory system. In the backdrop, you can see a pair of kidneys. On top of kidneys, there will be the uh, fatty layer or cap-like structure called as adrenal glands. So the ureter, urate, uh, the, they are the collecting dots joined to form the ureter. So the ureter leads into the urinary bladder and it opens outside. So through the uh, urethra. So the human excretory system, they consist of a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. So these are the components of the human excretory system. Human excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. So this is what is the components of human excretory system. So the human excretory system, it has a pair of kidneys. Let us understand the labeling of this human excretory system. This is given in the textbook. So you have to remember this diagram. So they are having this a pair of kidneys and they have on top of them a cap shaped structure, which is nothing but this adrenal glands above the renal. So kidneys are renal. So kidneys are bean shaped or beans are kidney shaped. That is how we define it, isn't it? So the uh, kidneys, you can notice that they have two regions, the cortex and medulla. So they have also have this renal pelvis. So they have this uh, renal artery and renal vein. So renal artery and renal vein, so which is coming out through the kidneys and they are joining into the inferior vena cava, okay? And uh, you can also notice that the urethra so is going to carry this nitrogenous waste from this renal pelvis. The ureter is going to carry the uh, urine into the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder is a reservoir. So and uh, they later throw this urine through the urethra. So through the urethra, the urine is thrown out of the body. So this diagram of the human excretory system you should be aware about. So they have an inferior vena cava which uh, supplies this nitrogenous uh, waste filled uh, blood. And then there is the dorsal iota which supplies the purified blood. So when we go into the understanding the structure of kidney, So you can see at the back part of it, the kidneys where they are located almost at the uh, above the waist region. So in the, at the backdrop of this rib cage, you can notice this kidneys. So reddish brown kidneys are reddish brown, bean shaped, bean shaped structures, which encloses a tough three layered fibrous capsule. So it encloses a tough three layered fibrous capsule that is renal capsule. Okay, so they have this tough three layered fibrous capsule. It is situated between the last, between the levels of last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae. So it is situated between the levels of last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae. So they are located at the levels of last lumbar, last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae. So the length of the kidney is 10 to 12 centimeter in length, width is 5 to 7 centimeter, 
thickness is 2 cm. Okay. The average weight of kidney is nearly 120 to 170 grams. So they are covered by this fibrous capsule that is the renal capsule. So they are situated between the levels of last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae. So the length of it is 10 to 12 centimeter, width is 5 to 7 centimeter, thickness is 2 to 3 centimeter. The average weight of this liver is almost 120 to 150, 170 gram. On the concave side of the kidney, that is this side, on the concave side of the kidney, there is an opening or hilum. We call this opening as hilum through which blood vessels, nerves, lymphatic ducts, and ureter enter the kidney. So there is an opening on the concave side of the kidney, which we call it as hilum or hilus, through which the uh, blood vessels like renal artery, renal vein, nerves, the lymphatic ducts and ureter enter the kidney through this hilum. Hilum leads to funnel shaped cavity called as renal pelvis. So this funnel shaped cavity, we call it as renal pelvis with projections called as calysis. So calysis is plural. So they have minor calys and major calys. So the renal, uh, the hilum leads into the uh, renal pelvis with projections called as calysis. So which can be major calys or minor calys. A kidney has outer cortex and inner medulla. So their kidney is having a outer cortex and inner medulla. So this is the outer cortex region and inner medulla. So medulla has few conical projections called as renal pyramids. So this conical projections, we call it as medulla region has this conical projections called as renal pyramids or medullary pyramids. We call it as renal pyramids or medullary pyramids projecting into the calysis. So cortex extends in between the the cortex is going to extend in between the medullary pyramids they are going to extend as renal columns and these renal columns are known as columns of Bertini. so the cortex extends in between the renal pyramids as renal columns and they are called as columns of Bertini, Bertini or Bertini. so each kidney has nearly one million tubular nephrons. Nephrons are the structural and functional unit of kidneys. Each nephron has a glomerulus and renal tubule. So each nephron has a glomerulus and renal tubule. So renal tubule has a distal and convoluted tubule, Henle's loop, proximal convoluted tubule and collecting tubule. So all these are the parts of renal tubule. So each nephron has two parts, the glomerulus, which has a Bowman's capsule and this network of blood vessels that is the glomerulus and renal tubule. Renal tubule consists of uh, the proximal convoluted tubule, Henle's loop and distal convoluted tubule. So glomerulus is the tuft of capillaries formed by afferent arteriole. So afferent arteriole will have a, a larger diameter than the efferent arteriole. So blood from the glomerulus is carried away by an efferent arteriole. So blood is brought to the glomerulus by afferent arteriole. So glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries formed by afferent arterioles. So blood from the glomerulus is carried away by an efferent arteriole whose diameter is small. It begins with a double walled cup like Bowman's capsule, which encloses the glomerulus. So the renal corpuscle is nothing but glomerulus plus Bowman's capsule. Together we call it as Malfigian body or renal corpuscle. So Bowman's capsule 
plus glomerulus together we call it as malphigian body or the renal corpuscle the next one is the nephron contain after this glomerulus or renal corpuscle or malphigian body so we enter into the renal tubule the tubule consists of proximal convoluted tubule okay so they have more convolutions henley's loop which is like an hairpin loop they have a descending limb and ascending limb and hen and distal convoluted tubule so henley's loop is hairpin shaped it has a descending limb and an ascending limb so this is the structure of nep nephron the structural and functional unit of kidneys are nephrons there are millions of nephrons in kidney they bring about this uh, formation of urine the filtration reabsorption of water so conservation of water reabsorption of sodium ions all those are going to take place in this uh, renal uh, the structural unit that is in nephron the distal convoluted tubules of many nephrons they open into uh, collecting duct so many collecting ducts collecting duct extend from cortex to inner part of medulla they converge and open into the renal pelvis so the collecting duct extends from cortex to the inner parts of medulla okay the medullary pyramids so they converge and open into the renal pelvis through medullary pyramids in the calyces so the malphigian body proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule are situated in renal cortex so what is the renal cortex made up of malphigian tubule malphigian body uh, this distal convoluted tubule and proximal convoluted tubule they are situated in the uh, renal cortex or you can also call it as renal corpuscle pct and dct are situated in the cortical region so you can notice here okay the medulla uh, or the medullary region they consists of loop of henley uh, is found in the medullary region the efferent arteriole which is emerging from the glomerulus they form a fine capillary network called as peritubular capillaries around the renal corpuscles so the efferent arteriole emerging from glomerulus forms a fine network capillary network around the renal tubule so yeah, a minute vessel of this network runs parallel to the henley's loop forming a u shaped vasa rectum so this capillary network uh, running across this henley's loop we call it as and it is u shaped we call it as vasa rectum so there is peritubular capillaries which are surrounding this renal corpuscle and uh, the capillaries which are surrounding the henley's loop forming a u shaped vasa rectum then the next type of things that we have to discuss about is types of nephron so cortical nephrons they are nearly 85% in this the henley's loop is very short and extends out very little into the medulla that is the cortical nephrons vasa recta is absent or highly reduced so vasa recta is absent juxta medullary nephrons so 15% of them are juxta medullary nephrons you can notice here so in this henley's loop is long and runs deep into medulla so vasa recta is present here so the network of capillary tubes the u shaped uh, capillaries so we call it as vasa recta so vasa recta is present in juxta medullary nephrons so nephrons are of two major types that is one is the cortical nephrons which are seen 85 percent of the total nephrons are the cortical nephrons so in this the henley's loop is very short and extends only very little into the medulla so vasa recta is absent or highly reduced 
whereas in juxtamedullary nephrons which are 50 percent of the total type of nephrons in this the henley's loop is very long and runs deep into medullum okay that is what you find in juxtamedullary nephrons and vasa recta is present so nephron you can see that there is an afferent arteriole efferent arteriole so this network of blood vessels we call it as glomerulus they have this bowman's capsule okay so this bowman's capsule leads into proximal convoluted tubule and uh, in this loop the descending limb ascending limb finally it leads to the distal convoluted tubule from distal convoluted tubule to the collecting duct so if they ask structure of nephron you have to draw this diagram with labeling so in the next class we'll be discussing about this formation of urine or physiology of kidney that we'll be discussing in the next class so today's class we described the excretory system which consists of a pair of kidneys ureters urinary bladder and urethra okay then we had discussed about uh, the structure of kidney okay so then we had also discussed about the structure of nephron so these are our discussions for today i think the urine formation will begin in tomorrow's class where they have three important steps glomerular filtration reabsorption and tubular secretion which we'll be discussing in the coming class so any doubts or clarifications that you have, dear students, we can get it clarified now. Any doubts or clarification that you are having?